I would think she has shown quite a few narcissistic tendencies in the past, particularly in things like the Opera Winfrey interview. I think there was a lot of narcissism in that. What did you make of the claims about Megan? I mean, starting with the psychological moments. These are all allegations, you know, allegedly over the phone. She treated people poorly and chewed people up in person. What was your reaction to these allegations? Well, I'm afraid I'm not surprised by these allegations, because even when she was at Windsor, I remember hearing from very good sources that there was trouble. There was a time when she was very rude to one of the undergardeners at Windsor when they were at Frogmore Cottage. The head gardener went to complain to the Queen, and the Queen went down and reprimanded her because the Queen obviously didn't like people being rude to staff. So having heard that story, none of these other stories surprised me. She probably is not very good with staff or with people she employs or those from whom she's getting flowers and things like that. It's just very unattractive because you should always be very polite to people who work for you and those you deal with over the phone. Otherwise, they are going to get very upset, and when things start going wrong, they'll be happy to answer questions from the media. I guess I think quite a lot of actresses have a narcissistic side to them. Yes, I agree with you. Of course, it can be very stressful leading up to a wedding, but once again, this is when your true character comes out. We can all be very polite when things are going well. It's when we're under stress that we see people getting annoyed and aggressive and so forth. So once again, I'm afraid it doesn't surprise me. I would think she has shown quite a few narcissistic tendencies in the past, particularly in the Opera Winfrey interview. I think there was a lot of narcissism in that, so once again, I'm not surprised. I'm afraid it's just not a very attractive characteristic. Well, I mean, screaming at somebody for 30 minutes does sound like a slight exaggeration because, you know, that requires quite a lot of effort, doesn't it? But let's assume it was just a little bit less than that. Once again, if you're working with a florist and you're employing them and something goes wrong, you can reply perfectly politely. You can express your annoyance at what supposedly went wrong without shouting at them. I think this particular florist, when I read the article, said that even though they very much liked having the custom of someone like Meghan Markle, it was all too much and they just weren't going to deal with her anymore. So that shows how serious it is. I think this is a very well-researched article, by the way, and something that one should take very seriously. It comes in response, of course, to her team putting out a lot of statements saying that she's the most wonderful person to work for and so on, which is again, you know, kind of a narcissistic thing. The fact that she felt the need to do that means she feels the need to try and squash these allegations, and I'm afraid she's failed to do so. Well, I think a lot of things have been said from the royal family, but I've always thought that she had this plan. I think she really liked the idea of working within the system because the system is tough. If you join the royal family, you are there to serve, and it's not all a great laugh every minute. They have a very tight program and strict schedules. The sad thing is that they could have been absolutely amazing as a new, fresh pair in the royal family. I think that trip to Australia they did was very successful, but the African trip was rather less so. I felt she probably did have a plan that by marrying Prince Harry, she would gain status, and then at some point they could depart and commercialize that. Whether that will be successful in the long run, I'm not so sure, in the short term, I think it probably was, but these things don't last forever. Equally, of course, I think she detected in Prince Harry a certain amount of dissatisfaction with his role in life, although it's a shame because he was actually very good at what he did. I've said this before, but I found a photograph lying on the floor. I'm a bit disorganized, and I thought, oh, look, there he is. He looks really happy. Dating back to 2015, which was pre megan and that's why he doesn't look so happy now. I'm afraid I can't tell you what his reaction is going to be, but I would imagine he would be very irritated by it and depressed by it because it's not an attractive thing to have said about you.
so it's difficult for me to say exactly what he thinks, but that's what he should be thinking, if I can put it like that. There seem to be an awful lot of things happening in the last few days and weeks, don't there? It doesn't look as though things are going terribly well. I mean, we've been discussing this for some days now in different aspects, including the fact that Prince Harry has been in New York on his own without Meghan Markle. It seems he's going to go to London without her. I think that's what I was told. There seems to be a lot of confusion, and therefore a lot of thinking about what the future holds. Articles like this are not going to help them in any way at all because this will end up branding them as extremely difficult and rather disagreeable people. And nobody wants to work for people like that. I wanted to circle back a little bit to the article from people who are kind of favorable to Megan's point of view. Do you want to expand a little more on your reaction to that? Because it's quite unusual. It seems to have almost become a little bit of a tit-for-tat situation, you know what I mean. I think that's what's going on all the time. One person says one thing, and another person says another thing. Certainly, as you have discovered, and as I've discovered, if you say anything about Meghan Markle, there are still a lot of people who are very supportive of her. They accuse you of getting at her unfairly and saying she's really wonderful and doing an amazing job and there are people who still think that. I personally don't, but I just don't like the way things have turned out. I don't like the way they have attacked the royal family. If you start casting aspersions on people in public, you're going to get a reaction. I can only tell you what I think, which is that I believe a lot of their popularity has diminished as a result of the book Spare, and some of the recent interviews and things because I think that most reasonable people, like someone in middle America, are not going to like the idea of someone being rude about his father in public. You just don't need to do that. These things should be kept private. So they have brought a lot of this trouble on themselves by these different things, and I suppose the reason they do them is because they are commercially viable or seem to be at the time. They get paid a lot of money to do these interviews. 